Down markets are one of the best things that can happen to a new investor. But it might not seem like it right now. Maybe your portfolio is down 30% or more. I understand how that feels. My portfolio has definitely decreased in value too. But this isn't the first and it won't be the last time. And that's actually a good thing. For the first five, 10, 20, 30 years of our investing journey, what are we? Well, we're buyers of investments, right? We're taking money from our paycheck and then using it to buy. Think of it this way. Let's say you walked into the grocery store today and noticed that everything was cheaper than yesterday. How would you feel? Probably pretty good, right? Well, what if that kept happening? Every day you walked into the grocery store, things were cheaper again. You'd be like, wow, this is so amazing. I can buy so much more butter or something, I don't know. Give me all the butter. So why do we think about the markets any differently? Why do our brains want us to buy expensive investments and then sell cheaper ones? I think it's a psychological trick that we play on ourselves and I also think it's very important that we break this. And some of Warren Buffett's teachings can help us out here. I know it can be a bit cliche to constantly invoke the name of Warren Buffett in an investing video, but it's for a good reason. He has timeless wisdom and tons of it. So there was a time when he talked about this concept of buying a farm. Well, if you have to closely follow a company, you shouldn't own it. Yeah. Really? No. I mean, if you, I mean if, you, if you buy a business, if you buy a farm, you know, do you go up and look, you know, every couple of weeks to see how far the corn is up and, uh, you know, do you worry too much about whether somebody says this is going to be a year of low prices because exports are being affected or anything like that? You know, you buy a farm. Let's say I wanted to buy a farm today. A nice ranch in the country. Some beautiful mountains in the background. A loyal steed to ride. Bare chested with a broadsword on my back. Yeah, that's the type of life I want. Okay, so I buy my farm. Awesome. Now Warren here points out something very important. Now that I've bought my farm, am I going to be constantly checking the value of it? The answer is no, of course not. And part of that's because I, I couldn't, even if I wanted to. There's no farm market where I can see the live trading price of my farm. So it's just not something I'm going to be worrying about for many, many years until the day comes when I'm finally ready to part ways with that incredible lifestyle. Then I will finally check the price of the farm. And if I bought a good farm, it will almost certainly be worth more than what I paid for it. So the fact that we can constantly see the price of stocks or even more constantly see the price of something like crypto is both a blessing and a curse. It's a curse because I don't think it's very beneficial for us to look at it every single day. But on the other hand, I think it's also a blessing because then we can use it as a tool on the rare occasion that the market market has a large drawdown. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my strategies for taking advantage of bear markets in the stock market as well as crypto. Now, as you guys know, I'm primarily very much a passive index ETF investor, but I do also have a section of my portfolio dedicated to capitalizing on what I think are good opportunities. And one of my favorite ways to do this is something called a limit Order. A limit order is a special type of order that you can place when you go to buy a stock or a cryptocurrency. And they allow you to attempt to get a very good price on a particular investment. So let me show you exactly how they work. And to do that, I'm going to use the help of today's sponsor, Newton. Newton is the main crypto app that I've been personally using for over a year now. And long before they offered to sponsor my channel, I ranked them as the number one crypto app for Canadians twice. So I appreciate that they wanted to support me and what I do. One of the huge advantages of using Newton's platform is that they offer limit orders. So I'm going to show you how they work using Newton's platform as an example. So in the app, all you have to do to open up the trade window is just simply press the bottom right button. And now here's where the magic happens. So you can see up here where it says market order, you can press this and then flip it to limit order. Now, the next step is to select which token you want to buy. So let's just put in Bitcoin here. And then here's the really cool part. So you can see that you can specify the highest price you are willing to pay for the token. Now, this is where it's different from just simply a normal market order. Here, you're putting in a specific price that you are willing to pay for this particular investment. So for example, at the time of this recording, right now, Bitcoin is trading around $38,000 Canadian. But let's say, 
say that's much higher of a price than I'm willing to pay. I want to try and buy Bitcoin when it's much lower. So to do that, I could do something like set an order way down here at the 200 week moving average. This moving average is typically an area where Bitcoin has historically hit at the bottom of its previous bear markets. And it's also a line that the stock market tends to bounce off of as well. So I can set a buy order to basically trigger right at that price by entering it in here. So the idea here is that this order is basically going to sit here like a, a little trap and then wait for the price to trade down to it, at which point it would activate. And the moment it would activate would be the moment that the price trades at or below the price you put in here. So if I enter something like 27,000 Canadian dollars here as my highest buy price, this order will not be triggered until Bitcoin trades down to at least $27,000. Now, it's very important to keep in mind that this may not happen. And if it does not happen, well then of course, this order is not going to be triggered. Now personally, I plan on setting probably a few limit orders around the 200 week moving average for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. In my opinion, as everyone gets super negative on crypto again, the space gets really quiet and boring, that's gonna be the time that I'm looking to reaccumulate. Now this is not investment advice, okay? This could wind up being a very terrible plan. I have no idea what the future holds and another bull market in crypto is far from guaranteed. So I'll only be using a portion of my portfolio that I'm comfortable with doing this. But the reason I'm telling you this is because I just want to be transparent about what I'm doing and my rationale behind it. But please do your own research and be very cognizant of the risks involved with speculative investing. With that being said, for those of you who are looking to enter the crypto market or those of you who are already there, for me, Newton is the number one platform for Canadians. You can sign up for Newton using my link in the description down below. And if you deposit and trade your first $100, you'll get $25 added to your account. Now, turning our attention to stocks, I have similar plans with Tesla. If we look at the 200 week moving average for Tesla, we can see that it's sitting around $400, which is quite a big drop from where we are today. Now, Tesla is already down about 50% from its all time highs, but I don't think it's out of the question that Tesla could continue to fall down to this area because of the macroeconomic circumstances that we are under. But if it did, it would then be trading at a forward PE ratio of about 36 while growing revenues 50 to 80% year over year. This would put it at a way cheaper valuation than any other mega cap stock on a price earnings growth basis. This would also give it a 2022 forward price to sales ratio of about 5.7, which is slightly lower than Apple currently is trading for today. And like I just said, the company is growing much faster than Apple. So I think at this point, if it did trade down to this 200 week moving average area, about $400 or so, I think a lot of people who were hesitant to buy Tesla for a period of time because it seemed to be quite overvalued, I think they'd be much more open to the idea because the company would be much more reasonably priced across various valuation metrics. Once again, this is not investment advice. This is just my personal choices and rationale, which I'll show you a little bit more of here. So based on this little quick and dirty calculator, I made a Tesla share price of approximately something like $420 yields about 20% of annual expected growth through the next 10 years. So that's pretty attractive to me, but obviously this model is super rough and it's only as good as the assumptions I put into it. I like to be much more detailed than this, but for the purposes of today's video, I think this will give a kind of high level, big picture of how I'm looking at things. So to begin with this little model, we have about $62 billion of trailing 12 month revenue today for Tesla. And with a 10 year growth, rate of about 33%. That means they'll earn about 1 trillion in revenue 10 years from now. Now this growth rate is arguably one of the most important metrics that you could put into this model. So how are they actually going to achieve something like this 33% growth rate year over year? For context, this is a super rough pathway of how they could get there. So you can see that Tesla's growth rate is currently very high. They're growing 80-ish percent plus year over year, depending 
depending on which area of their business that you are looking at. But this is likely going to taper off as it gets much harder to grow once your company is very big. So you can see we start at a high growth rate and then by year 10, we're all the way down to a 10% growth rate. Now, I think you can make the argument that this is both too conservative as well as too aggressive depending on your opinion of Tesla's ability to execute on its goals. The hyper bulls probably won't like this perspective and neither will the hyper bears. So I'm comfortable with this as like a relatively balanced view right now. Now, a lot of people will probably still think that that's crazy to say that that's a balanced view. And honestly, like I, I can't fault them for that. Tesla is a very abnormal company. It's very much against the odds. Like the company should not have succeeded in the way that it did. But that's kind of the whole thesis of choosing to invest in Tesla, in my opinion. It is very much a bet against the odds. So anyway, if we then take a 15% profit margin and then 1% share dilution and a PE ratio of 20, 10 years from now, we get a future stock value of 2,605 in 10 years. And if it was trading around 420 at the time that you made this investment, that is approximately a 20% annual return rate. So for me, I'm personally crossing my fingers that they do trade down to this 200 week moving average. And honestly, I think a lot of people are pretty surprised that they haven't already given how so many stocks are just getting absolutely killed right now. After all, the competition is coming. But I think part of the reason why Tesla hasn't gotten absolutely obliterated yet, even though everyone has the idea that it's extremely overvalued is because there aren't very many large companies who are growing at such a rapid pace as Tesla is, as well as being highly profitable. So I think investors are basically paying a premium for this growth and profitability, as well as generating really good free cash flow. They have massive pricing power, secular tailwinds, and declining cost curves. I mean, it's just a good business. You can argue all you want about valuation, but I don't think very many people are arguing that it's not a great business. Anyway, all of this is to say that something like limit orders and understanding the assumptions you make when you buy something can greatly reduce the fear and negative emotions that comes with investing in a down market. Instead, having these tools and this perspective can actually make it something to look forward to. And as far as ETFs go, well, I mean, we've been over this so many times. A simple dollar cost averaging strategy executed for the long term has historically been an excellent way to invest through many drawdowns much worse than this one. So in our metaphorical grocery store here, not a real one, but if we imagine the markets as a grocery store, everything is getting cheaper. What are you? excited to buy. That's going to be it for this video. Before you head out, don't forget to check out the link in the description down below for Newton if you want that $25. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. But I'm not sure when because I'm going fishing. You know those little signs that people put up that say like gone fishing or whatever? Wish I had one of those. CGI. <laughs> I don't have the budget for CGI.